speed time graphs are um, uh, a move on from distance time graphs. So instead of putting um, distance on your y-axis, you put speed in the y-axis. So that changes the shape of the graph, changes how the same journey is represented, so the graphs look different. So if we look at this example here, so this is a classic um, speed time graph where you have a situation where you start at zero velocity, you then increase the speed. So here we have a steady acceleration between A and B. Once we get to B, we are now traveling at the same speed because it's it doesn't change. This value remains the same. So this is the same steady speed, B to C. From C to D, again, you get an acceleration. Okay. Now, if you notice these two lines here, this line here, C to D, and this line here, A to B, this line, C to D, is a little bit less steep. This one here, A to B, is a steeper line. So that means the acceleration here is not quite as, as uh, large. It's not quite as um, you know, powerful in terms of acceleration. And then from D all the way to E, you have sort of an instant deceleration and the speed drops. So steady deceleration. And finally at E, we have reached the point of zero speed. So if the, if the object has zero speed, it is effectively stopped. Okay, so if we look at this particular example here for this little simple journey, we start at zero time. We only travel for 12 seconds, so it's not a very big journey. And uh, we reach a speed of 15 meters per second and then come back to a stop again. So the first three seconds, for, so from zero to this point here, so which is effectively this point up here, what's actually happening? Well, the object is accelerating. So first three seconds, starting from rest, the object accelerates to reach a speed of 15 meters per second. And it does that steadily. Between three and 10 seconds. So from this point to this point, those are 10 seconds, there's approximately our three. We have a situation where it is traveling at a steady speed. Or you can say constant of 15 meters per second. And then finally, last two seconds, the object decelerates to rest from 15 meters per second in a time of two seconds. So every second, its rate of deceleration, every second it loses seven and a half meters per second. So for, there's our first second, there's our second second, and then it stops. If we look at the acceleration, we can actually see that every second it gains five meters per second. So its acceleration here would be five meters per second per second. There's our three steps. Finally, if we look at this extension exercise, two things, mathematically the gradient equals the acceleration and the area equals the distance traveled. Can you work out the acceleration, deceleration and the distance traveled in the 12 seconds? So I, I, earlier I just mentioned that the, um, the acceleration here, so A would equal 
0 to 15, a gain of 15, and a time of 3. So your acceleration is 5 meters per second per second. Deceleration, okay, so the um, decel, we'll call it, would equal our change from our 15 up here to our zero down here in a time of only two seconds. So it would be um, 15 divided by two, which equals 7.5 meters per second per second of deceleration. And finally, the area of this shape, so this total area here, if we can work that out, that will tell us the distance traveled by the object. So what we can do, if you know the trapezium rule, um, or how to work out the area of a trapezium, then you can use that, because you have two parallel sides separated by a distance d. Okay. Uh, more commonly, we break our shape into three areas. So if you imagine a line drop down here and a line drop down here, you can immediately see that you've got two triangles and a rectangle. Okay. And you just use the numbers on the x and y axis. So you use the time scale for these for the these sizes effectively of your shapes, and you use the speed axis for the the heights um, of these different shapes here as well. So if we look at our three areas, um, we have our area one. So area one equals a three second base times a 15 meters per second height divided by 2. So 15 times 3 divided by 2 is 45 divided by 2, which is 22 and a half. Okay, and it would be meters. Okay. Our area 2 is easy because it's a nice big rectangle. So from 3 to 10, so this, this part here, that would be 7 seconds times 15 meters per second of height. So we have 7 seconds across the bottom times 15. So that's 105 meters. And finally, our area 3 would equal our 2 second base times our 15 second height divided by 2. So 15 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 is an answer of 15 metres. And that's the total area of the shape. So the total distance travelled is the three of them added together. So that would equal a distance of 142.5 metres. And that's it.